right now we'll continue our discussion with this screw conveyor equipment um, we'll move on now to the calculations of the screw conveyor now first let's talk about the um, capacity okay this is calculations okay, so for the capacity of the screw conveyor um, basically the screw capacity for a standard pitch and flight a standard pitch I would recall that when I say standard pitch that the pitch distance is equal to the diameter of the screw we can uh, compute that as e or by using this equation times k times n times um, okay we'll include this one that's the capacity factors if in case that we'll have a special flights for example or example ribbon um, ribbon flights puddle flights and stuff like that and other pitch distance okay so for the standard pitch and standard flights this is just equal to this is just equal to 1.0 Okay, so this is the capacity. Okay, so there's a subscript V. I included this subscript uh, letter V because we can also have capacity in terms of the, the mass or the weight. Now this one is just in terms of the uh, in terms of volume. So that's gonna be feet cube per hour. Now D sub S, that's the that's the diameter of the screw so this is d sub s okay, diameter of screw and this d sub b this is the diameter of pipe and this one would be the pitch pitch distance and this one would be the um, loading factor or trough loading percent trough loading and this one is speed in rpm okay so if this is feet then we can just convert this to um, to feet I mean if um, I mean typically this one is given in inches but um, let's just write it uh, in feet so that it would be consistent to this one okay so this is in feet this is in feet so feet squared because it's squared so feet squared and times feet so that's gonna be feet cube and then this one would be um, RPM so you can just convert this to um, let's say convert this to hour okay so this is the equation okay again um, the units right here this is usually given in inches um, but here I just write it uh, in feet so that it, it will be consistent right here in this capacity I mean the unit of the capacity the speed that's usually given in rpm so we have to convert that to hours so that you will get hours okay so basically in one revolution how much volume is discharging okay so um, by the way I forgot this one this trough loading Okay, let me draw this front view. Okay, so let's say this is our our screw conveyor, and if we have fifteen percent or thirty percent trough loading, then it's just gonna be like this. Uh, let's say this is fifteen percent, and if we have thirty percent, and if we have uh, let's say four to five percent or something. Okay, so it's not actually um, it's not actually f 
fully occupied by the material. Okay, so that's the trough loading. Um, going back again to this material characteristic table, you would, you would see that, for example, corn shell it says that uh, it's typical. I mean, the typical trough loading presentation is 45. Okay, so meaning it's only 45%. Okay, so if you draw it here, this volume that's actually uh, that's discharging per per revolution. Okay, so one rotation, then that's that's going to be the amount of volume. All right, now let's um, let's go to the capacity table. Okay, so this is an example of the capacity table from a manufacturer's catalog. And you would notice here there's a trough loading. Um, so that's 45%, 30% A. Uh, it means that's for non-abrasive. This one, 30% B, is for abrasive materials. And we have 15%. Okay. Um, in the next column, you would have screw diameter. So it says here that for a screw diameter of 6 inches, we have a pipe, a pipe size nominal diameter, that's 2. And we have a maximum, uh, the maximum um, RPM. And it also... Um, gives you the capacity in cubic feet per hour at maximum RPM what would be the the capacity and what would be the capacity at 1 RPM okay so so that's the capacity um, table now later Later on, we'll encounter um, we'll encounter um, external, I mean outside diameter, outside diameter pipe. This one is just um, referred to as nominal diameter, meaning that if this is the pipe, of course you you'll have a thickness. Then there is some um, let's say some dimensions here that going to be the nominal diameter and this one the inside would be the inside diameter and the outside would be of course the outside diameter okay so depending upon the schedule of the pipe so for s schedule 40 pipe the nominal diameter is basically the same as this inside diameter okay so just for now just take that when you when you say nominal diameter it just way of specifying the material even though it's not I mean when you say a pipe a 2 inches pipe for example a pipe that's 2 inches diameter schedule 40 okay so when you measure this inside um, it happens that it coincides with this um, I mean the nominal diameter is 2 inches and it's the same as this inside but the outside diameter is not now for some um, for some schedules this inside is no longer uh, let's say schedule 60 so the inside is no longer the same as the nominal diameter okay so this is just something like arbitrary or again something like uh, how you call or how you specify your material even though the actual dimension is is not all right now let's talk about the conveyor speed the conveyor speed is n is equal to the capacity required capacity so that's the um, that's the required capacity it's not the capacity in the in the table but 
um, that depends upon your uh, upon the homework problem okay so for example I, I would like to have a 1000 ton screw conveyor okay so based on those tables then you would you would derive your dimensions and other details now this speed is n is equal to this required capacity divided by the capacity at 1 rpm okay so recall that we have this uh, data in the table in the capacity table okay, capacity table okay so that's gonna be the actual speed the speed in the table is just say it's the maximum speed okay so meaning that you cannot go beyond that speed okay going back again to this capacity table so we have this um, capacity this is not the required capacity it just says that um, if you have this screw diameter then at maximum rpm this will be your capacity But sometimes in the problem or in the homework, uh, we are given a capacity that's not uh, that's not exactly as this one given in the tables. Okay, so we have to to design the, the screw conveyor. Okay, what else? Uh, lump size ratio. The lump size ratio. Okay, so lap size is basically you can just think about it as the basically the size of the material now depending on depending on, upon the material then there's going to be some limiting value on the diameter um, this will show you uh, this will dictate dictate in some situation in some situations the uh, the screw uh, diameter okay so we have this parameter l or the slump size ratio is just equal to the radial clearance all over the maximum lump size and we have this ratio this is actually given in table we have um, depending upon the class of the materials let's say we have class one and we have also class I think that's class two then class three now for class one materials it, may, it says that that it's a mixture of lumps um, and fines so we have basically lumps plus fines so they're not actually uniform i mean some materials have um i mean some mixtures are um, let's say for this class one that's 10 percent lumps and for this it says we have 25 percent lumps and for class three we have all or I think that's 95 95% lumps okay so you can just think about this you have a 10% lumps so these are the lumps and you have um, fines like this okay so you have only less lumps for class 2 then you have more let's say 25% are lumps Okay, in this mixture and for this one you have more lumps and only few fines okay so the size of lengths uh, lumps will dictate the the size of the um, screw um, screw diameter okay so later on we'll, we'll we'll get into the detail of this when we go to the calculation okay now we'll talk about the horsepower requirement okay, horsepower requirement now the horsepower uh, required to 
to convey the material is basically composed of this friction horsepower HP sub F plus material horsepower that's the anyway, I can just write this as uh, friction horsepower so if the screw conveyor is empty then what's going to be the horsepower required to to rotate the screw okay so I'll just say empty and then for the material itself then what's the horsepower required to move the material this is material horse power so HP required to to move the material okay so this is it but there's also another um, parameter here that's called the overload factor and then the drive efficiency so this is overload factor and then this one is the drive efficiency okay so um, for the friction horsepower HPF we have this equation L times N times FD times F sub B all over 1 million okay so this one is the length is the length of a screw conveyor in feet and this one is uh, the speed in rpm and then this one is the uh, diameter factor okay the diameter factor that's found in the table Okay, so for example, this is the, um, I mean, for example, we have a diameter that's 6 inches, then what's going to be the uh, diameter factor? That's 18. So that depends, uh, depends upon the, the screw diameter. Okay, so we have, if you have 14, then you have 78. Okay, the next um, parameter right here that's what we call the bearing factor that's the hammer bearing and that can also be obtained from the table okay so for, uh, for example we have this um, hammer bearing factor table so if you have a ball or then you have a 1.0 if you have a plane a plane um, what else uh, graphite or nylon then you have this value right here okay so I guess uh, since there's a ball here then I guess um, the hanger pairing can be uh, with rolling element okay so all these factors they're just found in the table okay so if you check the unit um probably you would think that it doesn't make sense but this is an empirical equation so therefore don't worry about the units just uh, just uh, make sure that for the length you input in feet and for example this one this um, speed screw speed that's in rpm so just make sure that you input this and then you are good to go okay the next horsepower is the material horsepower and is computed by by this equation so, uh, cv required times the density times the length right times the factors f um, this is the flight factor if you have a ribbon flight or cut flight then that's 
um, that's this factor um, what else f sub m this is the material factor and another one is f sub b so that's the pitch or i think this one is the paddle factor all over one million okay um this one is in feet cube per hour then this one is in pounds per feet cube okay so this is the density from table and this one is in length okay this one they're all in tables except that this um, material factor it can be found in the material I think that's material characteristics table okay so again um, the unit wouldn't um, probably the unit doesn't doesn't um, make any sense but uh, the, as I've said this is an empirical equation so just make sure that your units here is in feet cube per hour and then this one's pounds per feet cube this one is I guess this one is in feet now for a standard flight and if you have no no puddles then this one would just be equal to 1.0 okay so this is the material horsepower this one is the friction horsepower and this overload factor this will be taken from the figure and this drive efficiency this refers to um, to, for example this is the screw conveyor and we have uh, the care motor right here for example and is it connected by a chain or is it um, directly coupled to the gear motor Okay, and other details okay so we'll just have to check the table regarding this okay so now checking the table we have this drive efficiency factor e so it says here if we have a screw drive or shaft mount with v belts then our factor is 0 0.85 uh, if we helical reducer with uh, shaft coupling 0.85 if you have chain drive that's 0.85 but if you have a motor reducer with um, coupling then that's going to be 0 0.95 okay so uh, th this one this is something like this so it's something like a direct drive whereas this one is not I mean the three others they're not directly coupled okay um this value right here they're just taken from 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 a manufacturer's catalog and uh, some manufacturers might have different values for this and probably different uh, informations as well okay but but at, um We'll just have to select, I mean for now, we'll just have to select a certain manufacturer's catalog and then we'll just work our uh, computations based on that. And also, um, I would like to highlight that in this reference textbook, Technical Handbook for the Paddle Rice Post Harvest Industry in Developing Countries by Wimberley, there's um, slightly different equations for the horsepower although I've also noticed this uh, in some manufacturers catalog it looks like this except that there's a different uh, factors okay so anyways um, in the board exam then maybe if there's a problem about this screw conveyor uh, horsepower requirement computations then probably the equation would be from this one but you would also notice that 
Um, do you see it? That this horsepower is the total horsepower. And if you. If you try to simplify this. Um, this. Um, the friction horsepower and material horsepower. For example, there's an L, right? There's a length. There's also length here. There's. 1 million in the uh, denominator. There's also 1 million in the de denominator. Now, um, it seems like this is already uh, substituted and simplified. Okay, so the L goes outside, and then this one also goes outside from the groupings. Except that um, this S. It says here that the S is speed in RPM and T is the, the hanger bearing factor from a table. So, different notations. And this one is the material factor and the capacity, this Q. And then after that, uh, it is multiplied to this, um, or it is adjusted, the horsepower is adjusted, okay, depending. Depending upon uh, these conditions. Now, um, anyway, I decided to um, to adopt this manufacturer's catalog because because it seems to me that um, at least in practice, that's where or that's what you are going to consult. Alright, now um, we'll end this discussion and in the next lecture we will start a sample problem for this screw conveyor. Alright, see you in the next video.